Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Play Star Drive 2 Tips and Tricks. While we are invading the Chuck affiliation, I want to talk about Command Points. Command Points is the ability of your empire to support fleets or ships. The more Command Points, the more ships, the more fleets you can have. You start with five and you give, get two for every star base you have. You will get more command points when you build more star bases or you develop other buildings like the command center or the battle fortress and so on. Generally speaking, a ship that is in orbit of a planet will use less command points than a ship fly flying around. That means, other way speaking, if your ship is close to the source, the lo logistic is much easier than when it's driving around in the galaxy. So, for example, normally a cruiser takes three points, a frigate takes two points, and a corvette takes one point of command. Assuming that you build in your um, command modules. You see, this has um, five. Why is that? Command-based modules. We have three of them one here and one in each of the other ships and they will reduce the cost by one each so in bigger ships always build that in if you can if you extend or exceed your command point value you will have to pay for each command point over your normal ability by MC's and I do not mean by one or two MC's just watch the German version of this and you will see how much money you can lose by having a too big fleet so that brings me to another point. You see there is a point that is called free corvettes. What does that mean? For every command point you have, you can have a corvette that costs you nothing. We all know that defending a planet is hard. If it was real, it will be nearly impossible because the enemy can attack from any distance as a planet is a very predictable moving target and he can land on attack on any spot as a planet is round. So building stations normally will not help. Here there are very very limited ways to defend a planet. Uh, you can build space stations but they're not quite good at defending star bases. They're not quite good at defending planets actually. You could build uh, battle stations but that needs a lot of technology. And there are even ground batteries that we know for Masters of Orion but they're quite quite a long way in the research tree so what can we do to defend our planets we can build corvettes because corvettes will not cost command points so this i think is the seven second best corvette size in the game there is only one race that has a better size in the corvettes than my race and this will be this bear like huggers this i think they're called karathi like the guys from um, wing Commander. Why are these guys great? Well, because they've got these big side pockets. Now you ask, what is good about these pockets? I cannot fire forward. And it's more like a fighter than a, a ship of the line. So, yes, but look at this. You can do extended arc. And then guess what? You can fire 180 degrees. So if something is bef in front of your ship, you can fire at it. Isn't that nice? You could think about flak cannons, but look at the range. That will not be a good idea. You can think about these turrets with the laser cannons. Uh, but I'm not a friend of laser cannons. I strongly believe in rockets. So, what was there more to know about shipbuilding? A basic about shipbuilding is that no matter how many engines you build in, let's for example do this, this and that, you see we have an incredible speed. 46 knots or whatever it is and we turn with 96. Why is that not helping? Because the more you put into the ship, the more that will decrease. So if you build a ship even with the best engines you have and as many engines as you can get, if you put too many in it, too much weight in it, too much mass, it will slow down considerably. So, for example, if we take our rockets and we get them uh, overload, rapid fire and arc, you will see that they're so heavy that they're making our fighter 
into a dead duck with bound feet. The Vulcan cannon, for example, is extremely heavy when we start to um, enhance it. 16, well, except like same like the rockets, actually. Um, the Vulcan cannons, they do very little damage, but they fire very, very fast, so that could be a weapon for our fighters. I don't think we need rate extends, it's not helping that much. So, see? That would be an idea, and then going boo 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 all the time. But the problem is, we don't have any engines in it yet. We don't have anything else in it yet, so it will get so slow, no matter what we do, that this thing will not do any good in closed combat. So fighter battles like Star Wars, not with this ship. So as we know that we will not be able to fly this thing like a TIE fighter, we must more think of it like a space turret. A slightly mobile space defense turret. Think of Cardassia Prime from Star Trek Deep Space Nine, the defense turrets, something like that. So, why rockets? We have 200 speed here and they're guided. We could take extend arc and rapid fire. And they get a little damage bonus when we go for the laser cannons. Laser cannons will do only 50 damage with a slightly greater range and as you can see they will do far less damage when we're uh, at higher ranges. So we could go for arc extended for this and for rapid fire and they will cost 16 tons. So we'll fire a lot but it will not help that much. I believe in rockets. What to build in front of the ship? Well in theory you could build smaller rockets in there as well to gain more firepower because as this is a turret our main goal is to fire as much as possible the only problem is you will see that in a second we will have real problems powering that thing and giving it ammunition so now we have only man um, ammunition for 91 seconds this sounds bad, but it is actually not. These Corvettes are one-shot one one wonders. They're cheap, and their only mission is just to keep the enemy at bay when he comes for our home systems. Whoever is coming for our home systems is hopefully a pirate, something like that. Nothing with a major fleet. And I think for 59 hammers, that is quite a good ship. You do not need fuel capacity, and yes, we're very slow, since we've put a lot of stuff in it. So, no fighter battles, as I mentioned. And power shortage can do nothing about that. We have no cockpit in it, we have to live with that. And I will name it after the soldiers in the British-American War, which are called Minit, Minut, I don't they'll know how you write that in English. I think they were called Minute Minuteman. Minuteman. Oh, my spelling is, is terrible. Minute ship, in my case. Well, because they took a minute to reload their guns. So, let's keep this. So, this is the minute ship. And as you can see, we can have seven of those without even paying a command point. Isn't that glorious? So after that we need this. You're building a cloning center. After that we need a fleet academy. We have uh, a starbase here, that's okay. So let's go on. Oh, there's one more thing I wanted to talk about. The technology. We were going for iron beams for our fighter but actually you can see that we will get fusion beams then we will get disruptor cannons and then we get a long time nothing until the phasers come up so we will not go for iron beams because they will um, be outdated too fast we will not go for the collider because it will cost too much money and we can go for solar armor because as I do not believe in armor I think solar armor is producing energy and so therefore it's not that bad 
Um, that brings me to another idea that I will show you later. It has to do with shipbuilding. Whoa, so you see our food? That means we have too much food production. And it is here. Woohoo! Nice. Yay! Victims! Xerum 2, EM Field. Uh oh, minus 50% production. This is bad. This is really bad. Well, but who cares? We have a starbase, and we're building a fleet academy, which is excellent. As soon as the fleet academy is ready, we can start building ships. So, we could fight. A glorious fight in ground combat against this power armor heavy wheel weapon wielding maggots. But we have got nuclear strikes. And guess what? Um Yeah, it will do, do fallout because we're using nuclear strikes. Um we kill population with it and well we destroy pleasant uh, planetary improvements. But you see, they're getting wounded. Excellent. And the planet is ours. And we even got an infantry base and an automated rover bay, which is excellent. Next thing I want is the farm, because they're not producing any food here. And that is very, very bad. Um, so what to do? Well, we have uh, the solar armor, so we start sacrificing people. Woohoo! Solar armor is the sensible marriage of photovoltaic technology with traditional armor plating. These panels are relatively cheap and efficient, and can be effective at the power generation and mass. Of course, considering the dual role as both source of power as well as protection armor plate, it would be unwise for a combat ship to rely solely on those panels due to likelihood of they will be destroyed in combat. Yes, but they make our ship lighter in mass and therefore faster. So, oh, we must search, uh, we must pick a new research path, and so we will. And we will not go for fusion beam, although we could, because it will be outdated too soon. We will go for fusion power, because that means our ships will use less mass, because fusion power is more effective. You have done what the Dask God asked for, despite your skepticism. But true to his word, the very instant the final sacrifice entered the sacrificial pit, the voice of our God returned on all frequencies. Good. Good. You have pleasured me with your devotion, as promised. I will now grant you two boons. Boon the first. When you sacrifice a citizen, I shall now double your fiscal and scientific rewards. Do not ask how, for I'm a god, and this includes access to your financial networks. Well, then I must be god, because I have access to the financial networks. The question is, do I have access or control? Boon the second, I promise to spend some extra time answering your prayers. Your people will be eternally grateful, I'm sure. Now go, my minions, bring me more sacrifices. Well, uh, as you can see, we get a plus five bonus to all colonies for having sacrificed this poor fellows. Woohoo! Nice! Um, we will immediately go for the heart. There is a ship, but it's a merchant fleet, so it's not our problem. And I think we need someone there. So how do we do that? We simply click him and do that. And our citizen will go there and, well, make the planet more suitable to our people. We will get rid of that guy and then we'll be happy. Well, mm, you might notice something. I'm working a little bit like the Third Reich. Um, I'm attacking to gain money and to keep my empire running. I'm getting rid of people by using um, not very human ways to um, make the plants for my own race suitable and get rid of the others. And uh, we're using carriers. Well, Third Rise has only one carrier and that was not quite <laughs> a very good one. But yeah, that is a little bit disturbing, I think. 
So, don't like that much. But what can you do? So, oh, we have a we have a food overflow here. That's not what I hoped for. Let's have a look. Ah! Cannot do anything against the food overflow at the moment. Uh-oh. Reports are floating in from sensor stations across the galaxy regarding a subspace anomaly that has suddenly appeared. The volume of subspent particles emerging from this anomaly anomaly is beyond anything we've ever seen. Our scientists are clamoring to a closer look. If we can send a fleet to the anomaly pan, perhaps we can learn more. But we should be quick, but there's no telling how long the anomaly will last. Well, let me tell you one thing. This is not a normal anomaly. This is the masters. These are the really, really bad guys. And as you can see, there is a ship going for our planet, but we're not disturbed because this is a fighter. As you can see, they have nearly the same idea we had. It's quite cheaper than our ship, and it has, it has far more um, uh, stamina in battle, and it's much faster, but it has also far less firepower. But that's a Corvette as well. Compared to our Corvettes, it's much faster. Why is it no problem? Because it cannot do anything. <laughs> it's hard to say that, but that thing can't do anything. Because it has no bombs and it has no troops with it. Fight! Now look at this. Thing to attack us. And it's quite a big one. I hope it will not jump. No, it's coming for us. So this will be hard. Oh, what is it? A red heart. It's armed with missiles. Uh oh, missiles coming, missiles coming, missiles coming. Evade, evade, evade. Oh, oh shit, we're hit. But now is he, and he does not seem to have any weapons uh, behind. And my fighters are faster than his rockets, mainly. Oh, he's already burning. He's trying to retreat. And we're simply too far, uh, too slow. Well, he wasn't fast enough for retreating. So we get rid of him. Excellent. And we get medals. Nice work there. We have no time to waste because I have a plan. We must take that planet. Oh, what is this? Mono Central. Nice. Another ship, same size, but no problem. Good. They're build oh, they're not building anything. That's not good. Okay. Um. You build. Actually, you build this. You might call me nuts, but I will tell you why. Yes, we should start building ships because the enemy will, will be all over us within seconds. But if we take that planet and use its population to research things, our ships that we could build now will be outdated in seconds. And what the hell is this? A Crusa Swarm. Oh, we could rename enemy fleets. Um... This looks like living ships, like the Leviathan from Farscape, or the Lex from Dark Zone, or a Dolan from Perry Roden. Well, we'll see about that. Fight! Good fight, good night. So, we get the farthest away that we can, because we want... Um, our ships to be not that badly hit. Uh, 
Power to engines, everyone. We must be really careful. This thing can kill us with ease. Okay, you try to get in the way. And I even think that you should try to fly more stable. Hopefully, oh, 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 oh it stopped firing. Wonderful. <laughs> because when you turn your back on the enemy on the battlefield, they will hit you in the aft section. There is your engine. When your engine's off, you're lost maneuverability, and then they will hit you all in the back. As soon as one is the section is, is destroyed, you're pretty much dead. They're making their work with that station, that's okay. We could even try to attack the station now. Three mid cooldown. Oh, no, 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 it's firing again. It's firing again. Turn away! Turn the ship! Is it or is it not? No, it's firing at the fighters, not at us. Fighters do not run out of ammunition. Fighters do not run out of energy. Fighters are still simply the best weapon in my eyes because they do not even outdate. As soon as you research a technology, your fighters will be updated automati automatically. So your ship does not have to go back um, to refit when you're a fighter carrier. Everything you will research will immediately be built into your car into your um, fighters. So a fighter is a cheap and an always updating, self-updating ship. So it should it should go down any minute. Now we lost a lot of fighters, I guess. But that's okay. That's totally okay. There it goes. Nicely done. Oh, we got something. A water to ship then had been reduced to 35%. Hmm. I think you must like those medals if you go for it. So, I think some bombardment is necessary. Nice. Cape chair. So, look at this, the planet is ours. We have an infantry brace. First thing we need is that. Then we need this. Then we need that. Then we need this. Then we need that. So, what are we searching? Fusion power. Very good idea. Very, very good idea. Fundamentally, this power plant is still operating with nuclear process. The fusion of very atom released energy but can be captured and used on a ship. Even though the reaction generates a large amount of power, the process is still exceeding inefficient in for a variety of technical reasons. The technology is also incredibly expensive related to standard fusion technologies. Well, I don't care. Okay, we could now go for subspace projectors. Advanced warp theory, which makes our ships faster, or main engineering. I've never really tried out this one here. But I hope that it will work like roads. Remember, there's still some bugs in this game. Creativity, for example, is not working as far as I know. This technology allows your construction ships to build the subspace projector space station. Subspace projectors create a tightly focused subspace field allowing for rapid travel along the axis of the field. In essence, a highway in space. After you deploy the station, you can select it and right-click to charge orientation for the subspace field at any time. Nice. Next thing we go for is, I think, disruptor cannons. Uh, or, am I right? Am I wrong? Disruptor cannons, yes. And then there is long time nothing. Disruptor cannons. Okay. In the pit. In the pit. I don't care about your shit. Oh, look at this. We have uh, put in more than 10 of them, and so we're getting 200 PC and 200 research. So I think sacrifice 
is the best thing you can ever do. Disruptor cannons operate by expanding the molecular bonds of the target, causing them to break apart. The same general principles used in laser cannons that work here. The energy is infused into a medium, typically a gas, which, gas which is then encased in a magnetic packet and accelerated towards the target. There is some energy bleed off over the time of the particle, making the weapon much more effective at close range than long ranges. So, what is the next thing we want? Plasma fuel cells, defensive flares, or plasma cannons? Um, I go with the fuel cells because they give us 33% more fuel. And we're, I'm not the cannon type, anyway. Plasma is capable of holding an accelerated range, making it a good choice for a defense fuel, dense fuel cell. Plasma fuel cells indicate the fuel capacity of your ships by 33%, allowing us to reach deeper into the stars than our standard fuel cell technologies allow. The fuel cell technology will be automatically applied to all ships in the fleet. Hooray! Uh, rail rifles has been proven to be quite ineffective. Mass drivers, I'm not sure about those things. And pulse cannons. Um, I have, I think I have tried mass drivers. Even at long ranges, I think we go for the pulse cannons this time. I wasn't that happy with this. Pulse cannons fire disabling blasts of electronic magnetic energy. When a ship receives EPM damage, its systems will be knocked offline in the advancing quadrant of a short period of time. The period of the disabling effect is directly related to the size of the effect ship's hull. The larger ship, the shorter the disabling effect. However, repeated hits will stay strike and increase the amount of time a shin with ships will be offline. Now this is really hard. High density, high energy focus is the thing my brother loved more than life in Masters of Orion 2. Class shields, class 1 shields, shields are always wonderful. And power density will give us um, Resulting in plus 50 damage for all our energy weapon cannons. Oh boy. This is a hard choice. But shields are simply great. Energy cannons can operate on the basic principle of a supercharging medium. Uh, it's possible to suppress. The advantage provides 50% mass boost to the effective density. The energy we pack into the building will repeating in a 50% damage of all our energy weapons. 50% damage. And class 1 shields will be outdated sooner or later anyway. Because we'll get for better shields then. On the other hand, <sighs> shields may save lives. We could build ships shields into the corvettes. The problem is if we build ships in shields into a corvettes, it will even need more energy that we might not be able to provide. So that could be a problem. And this thing is always working and that thing has to be built into the ship. Well, let's have a quick look at what comes next. Class one shields. Where's the next shield? There is no no level two shields actually. Kick me in the butt, but there is no, no level 2 shields. Class 3 shields. Uh, power density. Oh, that's a hard question. Cannot quite answer that. I think we go for that then first. In the pit! Low G adaptation. It's worked automatically and we have low G planet, so that is excellent. Um. Oh shit, I forgot something. <laughs> I should listen to myself. We need that. We need Xeno assimilation. We need Xeno assimilation. Astromatic Lab is nice from the idea, but you need big ships to fit them in. And trust me, you will need your big ships for other things. 
research per scientist is nice, but we're not the researching type. We take the research lab. Now, I think we'll go for the Imperial Bank because we're not the slaver types. The VR net is nice, but we need the Imperial Bank because we will run out of money soon. One more in the pit. And now the next thing we need is Xeno Assimilation. This will give you a technology every time you conquer a planet. And believe me, that's our idea. So that is the single most important technology in my eyes. And I go for other things. I must be nuts. So... We fly back here, and then we go down for the last planets of the morons. So, as you all know, we have um, researched a lot of new technology now. Can we do this? Yes, we can. That's wonderful. And here, oh, oh, too much food, too much food. Excellent. Um, what's up here? They're not producing any food, that's nice with me. We can now research or build a new ship. Our Minuteman is nice, but I think with the new technologies, we should be able to build something else. We could build an EMP cannon. Problem is, it does nearly no damage. It only takes the enemy out of action. This thing here does a lot of damage. As you can see, 400 damage and we get a damage bonus. Uh, let's see, we do this, we do that, and we take it rapid fire. I don't care for the size. The ship will get slow anyway, no matter what we do. We build a big engine in it. That will give us enough energy. We will build two of this in it. Yeah, we can fire indefinite. Still indefinite. Those are energy weapons. Yes, they are. Well, let's get some engines on that thing. Oh boy, we're slow. Uh, what is... The cockpit is too big, right? If we take small fusion reactors and then we take some solar armor, yeah, it won't work. We could take one of the engines off. Why do I put the solar armor in front? Because the main damage this ship will receive will come from front. And that means we need to build armor into our front so that the ship survives long enough to fire at the enemy. So, seconds to empty. Damage bonus. Well, actually, we don't need the reduction of... We don't need the reduction. We don't need the reduction. Command points is not the problem. Sensor range is not the problem. A bonus and damage would be nice, but we will take what we can get. So, about the power plant. And some of this. Infinite. Now we, now we can fire as long as we want. Is there anything else we can build in to survive longer? Not really. We could build point defense weapons in it, but that is no place for it there. We could build it that way, so it's it's still fast, because if we build things in it now, uh, guess what happens? Yes, we will get slower. Because we'll add more mass. For example, if we take more armor in it, we will uh, lose speed. Ah, it's a shame. 
We still have room. We still have room. But I have no idea what to build in. We could uh, do more. Oh, look at this. Seconds to empty. Okay, no, no, no. We need the we need the engine. Okay, so then that is our buzzer because it has these energy weapons with it. Yeah, we do very little damage on grain ranges. I know. About three hundred. We're still doing not as much damage as the minute ship. Is there a way we can build the minute ship better now? Rockets. Arc extend, rapid fire, one, two. Small missiles, one, two, one. We're doing 100 damage. We could build engines in it. We have miserable engines, by the way. And we build one small power plant. One more. Yeah, it won't help. We could do the following. We could do this. And then we take this out. And take in... An ammunition cage. But as you can see, we can only fire 41 seconds. So that's not, not, a, not a good idea. We can remap this ship, however, because now we have the technology to do so. The no, new big MT will be far more effective than the old one. So, you might call me nuts, but I actually want to have more artillery in here. Uh, put that out, put that out. Uh, we do rapid fire, we do heavy, we do speed boost, and we don't need arc extend. So, four of these cannons in front. Actually, we built them there. As most of the damage will be coming from front, we'll build solar panel plates to protect us at least a little bit. We will take engines. Actually, we can build a huge engine in here. Or we could take two large engines. Um, we take a fusion power plant. Oh, do you see the problem? We need that one here somewhere. And there is no really place except here. Well, it's not the moving type anyway. So who cares? We will need ordinance. 300 seconds until empty. That's totally okay. We still have not enough fusion power, so we will do that. We will need fuel. Give me more fuel. Oops. So, wonderful. 300 and make that 400. Excellent. We have a very good energy surplus. We must do something for our close defense, though. I think flak cannons, excellent points defense weapon, arc extend, range extend, and rapid fire. So that will help a little bit against enemy fighters. We will do this. And then I want more solar armor power. Because I'm pretty sure we'll get nailed. If things go back, it's good to have some armor. Good. Nice. Nice ship. A little bit costly, but a nice ship. I guess. So, we have, we have much, way too much energy. 
We have a lot, lot, a lot of energy, and we have still three space. But who cares? Um, I call this the sun flare. Okay. So the enemy will be closing in within seconds. You have a production of forty-six. You have a production of fifty. So you will start building. The um, buzzer actually. No, actually, you should build the big ships. Um, the sun flare, please. Thank you, sir. Build me a sun flare. Oh shit. Now, who cares? And another sun flare, and another sun flare. And I want you, after the academy, to build me. What? I want you to build me um, the buzzer. Because the enemy will be over us within seconds, I guess. What are we researching? Oh, we should put points into this research field. Yay, now they start building the good ships. Yeah, they're within our range, but they're no problem, because they will get away, I guess, I hope, I think. So... Take care of that one. Um, yeah, we fight them. You will now see what the ships can do with the new fighters. Oh, here they come. Oh, we're simply too slow. Look at this. But they're fast. But if you think that they are fast, wait until we encounter... Um, crystalline targets. Woohoo! Any questions? There, he loses speed. I, I think I make a special video about the things that can be done better. This game is wonderful, but there are some small things that can be done. For example, if you can watch um, the interior of the enemy ship in the battle so that you can see what is damaged, then boarding would be nice. Oh, they want to discuss. They want to talk about peace. But guess what? Peace is off the menu. Peace is off the menu. So. We must get rid of the enemy fleet because I do not want to encounter it by this, guys. And look at this. The first is ready. Nice. Actually, there are two buzzers ready. And we can have 11 of those. So build me more buzzers. Is every colony building at least something? No, you're not. Why you're not building anything? Are you nuts? Build me this. No, actually, build me that first. It's cheaper, and you always build the cheapest buildings before the others. What is going on here? Ah, we should send someone here. Um, you there, you go to... Oh, we have no transports at the moment. So we cannot send anyone there. We have a slight food overproduction again. They are building a rover bay, which is no help for us at the moment. Everything's all right here. They're building more and more buzzers, which is good. And the fleet has detected... No, we have detected the fleet. Everything else is okay. 
Let's have a quick look at the planet overview. Who's producing too much food? Actually none, because if we move one there, yeah, we have a minus food. That's not good. They're not building anything, so we should perhaps invest the production of the robo factory so that they're at least building something. Quite hurts, though. Nice. So... Now it takes 18 turns to build something. Great. At least we have another free... Um, transport. So we can send someone here. That will help. And they're building another sun flare, which is good. I expect the enemy from the wormhole to appear at any moment now. Yeah, alert. A fleet of heavily armored vessels has entered our sensor range. The super configuration are not unlike the vessels we have seen before, the so-called remnant vessels. But these ships are far more advanced, and they seem to be aggressively moving into our space. We should intercept those vessels with haste. Yay. Oh, look at this. They will be all over us within a second. There's only one thing we can do. And that is pray that our fleet is strong enough to withstand them. So this should be the end of the uh, vulgar or whatever they're called. How could they, they use the wormhole? This terrible suckers used the wormhole. Oh shit. And they will destroy the starbase unless we change course and intercept them. But with this fleet we'll not be able to intercept them. No way in hell. Well, I think that's a fight for the next episode. Will I prevail or not? We shall see. Until then. Bye.